Yo guys, what is up? Matt back here. Today is May 30th. It is around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We've had a steady rain all day long. Um, I didn't bring the deeper today. Uh, today my main goal is to try to catch some topwater fish. Um, usually right after a rain and during the rain. I really love to throw a topwater. Uh, partly cloudy skies as you can see here. Um, we got three different top order baits right here. We got a popper, we got a frog, and we got the whopper plopper. Now, um, I'm going to be using these frogs to cast underneath docks and stuff like that. Or, you know, where some of those patches of grass are, where the treble hooks aren't going to do so well. And then along the banks and stuff like that, and maybe open pockets. Maybe like a lawn docks where they're not so weedy. I'm going to be using that whopper plopper and the popper bait. So hopefully we can get on some fish guys. So stay tuned. And I got this nice point right here. I'm going to cast over this point. Got one. There we go. Oh, nice. He barely just tapped it. All right. Oh man, we had a bunch of them following this guy. Alright guys, first one of the day there. Small guy, but he was vicious. Sucked that popper right down. See a little dude. He came right over this point. Just a little bit of breeze blowing in. I always like to fish over points. Doesn't matter the conditions. When there's a point like this, I always try to fish them no matter what. Uh, you can try def different methods, but today I'm just trying to focus on a top water bite. You know, if it doesn't go out the way I planned, I'll switch it up. But I am gonna try, try, try. Alrighty, first one, guys. That's good. Another one. Look at the large mouth underneath them. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh man, there's some good bass underneath these guys. I should have brought a jig up with me too. I got one back in the car, but that'd be a good follow-up bait after throwing this. Alrighty guys, there's a little one on the popper right there. See a little dude. Just fishing this bubble popper in a loon color. A little feather trailer hook on the back. Fishing right over this point.
another one. Wow, dude, top water. <laughs> oh my God. I was hoping after this rain, top water bite would be on, you know, a lot of these bugs fall in the water and stuff. It really just, it really turns the fishing on. Another little guy, but we're going to take him. Right after I release that one. Awesome guys, this is great. Another little guy right there. Just very nice fish though, look how healthy he is. He's not all beat up. Just really nice looking. Let's get him back. That was cool. That was really cool. Yeah. Bam. There we go. There's a fat little bass, guys. Nice one. How fat his belly is. Holy cow. Off that river to sea bubble popper. Now, before, before this guy hit, I was going to say something. I saw two little bass following it, like little. And I don't know if that triggered him to come up and eat it too, because he saw the other bass interested. And then, also... Um, I have still seen some beds around. Um, I don't see any bass on the beds, but I wanted to point out that there was this big, huge carp. And I knew there was a bed here uh, a week ago. And there was a huge carp here digging around. I don't know if he's eating eggs or what, but then there was two giant smallmouth. I mean, big. I would say five pounds. You guys probably couldn't see them through the camera, but they were huge. And they were just following that carp around. And what those smallmouth will do, they'll wait for that carp to stir up stuff. And a lot of times that carp is going to stir up crayfish. And those smallmouth are going to be lazy and just follow those carp and uh, pick up those crawfish that those carp stir up. Kind of a little fun fact for you guys that uh, I've noticed. And actually, when the carp start doing that more often, um, some days I'll just kind of look out for the carp. And when they do that, and these smallmouth, I'll throw a little finesse jig. I'll slightly pitch it in there really quiet. And just let that thing fall and sit right where that carp is. And I swear to God, guys, a lot of times that smallmouth comes in there and picks that thing up. And I set the hook. It's actually really cool, man. So if you guys ever see that, uh, definitely throw a jig in there. Just be really quiet and don't spook them. And it's very possible you can get those nice smallmouth that follow those carp around. Let's see if we get some more top water. Another little one on the popper, not very big. Down he goes, right off this rock ledge here. Um, I'm not recording all my fish, I'm catching a lot of small ones today. But my goal was to come out here and catch topwater fish, so that's what's happening right now. So, having a lot of fun though, but they're not. They're not the size I'm looking for. Oh, 
little smally on the popper. Seems fight hard though, I'll tell you what. He's a little smelly off the popper there. Another one off the popper. I mean, he's just, they're just barely even hitting it. A lot of these small guys right here. There he is. Man, I don't know how many of these I've caught today like this. Probably 30, but it is a lot of fun. Catching them off that top water, man, it's a blast. You see how light they're hitting it, man. They're just tapping it. Just tapping it. Not, whoa. Not very big, but very powerful, that's for sure.